with the owner of Hive Alive, Dara Scott. I am so excited to chat with you because I have loved Hive Alive for the last like five years and it's made a huge difference in my own operation. Oh, so that's great. I wanted to be prepared, you know me, so I wrote down my questions just so I didn't get off topic or anything. So let's just dive right into it if you're ready. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks. Great to be interviewed. Great to be sitting here, <laughs> standing here, chatting. It's good. Yeah, on a busy, nabby show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been great so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like sure. you guys have been pretty busy too today. It's Yes, it was busy. Today is flat out. Today, we're, we're yeah. going to run out pretty much everything by the end of the day. Good. Yeah. Good problem to have. Yeah, we thought we brought too much. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> So, okay, first question I have for you. What gap in beekeeping originally pushed you to start Hive Alive? Uh, actually, the very beginning of it was uh, Nasima Sarani. Uh, there was, um, so it's, it's, it's 20 years ago that I started developing Hive Alive. We've been selling it for 15. Uh, and, and it was Nasima Sarani. Had, people kind of just started learning about it. They were realizing it was connecting to the colony losses. And I said, okay, the only part that was out there was an antibiotic that is actually banned in Europe. Uh, it's not allowed to be used in Europe. I know it's used in the US and Canada. And I was like, we must be able to come with a natural alternative for that. And and so that's so started developing with that. It was like, what can I do that's natural, that's going to help keep colonies strong uh, and be able to fight against this, 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 this yeah. disease. Yeah. yeah. So that's how it started. That's the very beginning of how it started. And that was then working with researchers, um, particularly seaweed researchers, um, uh, working with universities different universities around Europe in particular, uh, developing it, um, trialing it, uh, trying different variations of it, trying different combinations of stuff, and then finding something that's finally worked. Yeah, because you're a physics major, right? Yeah, physics science background. Uh, I, I, I worked in the medical industry uh, in the past, uh, medical device industry, uh, uh, for analyzing blood. Uh, and then I ended up working for 10 years at the Wood Social Graphic Institute um, with their David Deep Zero, at the world's deepest at the time. Uh, we went on the road traveling work, doing different scientific expeditions. Yeah. I suppose that's where maybe the seaweed angle came in there. I was kind of working with researchers who would have known a lot of stuff. So, so, yeah, I was lucky to have that opportunity. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Right place, right time, it sounds like. That's what, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and taking advantage of it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. So, also, was there a point that you realized that the colonies were being left exposed to constant biological pressures with not really any protection for them? Yeah, so, so I mean, Speaking, you know, I remember the very first time we went to go sell Hive Alive or expose people to Hive Alive was at an AP Mondia, whatever, 15 years ago, somewhere like that. And the first person to come up to me spent 10 minutes ranting as, why would I give my bees this? My bees done fine, da 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 da. And I was like, you'd be upset. And I was like, but, it, but beekeeping now is not what beekeeping was 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. Beekeeping now is a struggle. Like, you know, they, they're, there's a, they're, they're constantly under stress. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's where Hive Alive comes in, is the whole idea of Hive Alive is you're keeping your colonies at, at a healthy level, that there, there are less prone to, 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 to uh, uh, stress. So like, classic example here, I, I had to take antibiotics um, before, before I came because I got a science vaccine because I was running around like nuts, I was stressed out and my immune system was compromised. Uh, and, and whereas the whole idea is Hive Alive is you're keeping your colonies healthy, I'm sure we'll talk about it later, but we, and we have all that data and, and testimonials, and we have uh, the, 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 the surveys to back that up as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's almost the same thing applies with how we are. Usually when you get sick, everybody asks, oh, well, have you been taking your vitamins? Yeah. I mean, same thing with the bees. They need them too. Yeah. It's, and, and it's, you know, there's a big difference between beekeepers who are proactive versus reactive. And, and you really notice the ones who, the good beekeepers are proactive. They're keeping their colonies healthy. Uh, they're... they're they still get hit when you know, some new virus comes down. They still get hit, but they just don't get hit as bad. And and and, and they're they're better under control. Their bees are in a better state. And healthy bees are more productive bees as well. So you're getting more honey, you're getting more bees, more nooks, all that sort of thing. Yep, totally. So as Hive Life has grown globally, because you're pretty big now. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> what core principle has remained non-negotiable when it comes to keeping colonies healthy? Yeah. Um, well, uh, for, for me, I mean, my core principle is, is, is that, 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 that we have, that, that there's, there's validation behind what we're doing. So, so we're not just grabbing a bunch of extras and saying, oh, we think it's a good combination and, and it works. We have peer-reviewed published papers behind to show that the, the colonies do better, they overwinter better, uh, that they keep disease levels lower better, that they, they break down the pathogens in, in the colony 
overwinter when the syrup is being stored in the colony, they break down spore walls, if you see them, jaw fruit, fallow fruit, and many other sort of spore-driven pathogens like that. Um, so it's keeping the colonies healthy. And I, I, I think this thing, again, going back to that, I think that that's all about with modern beekeeping now is, is keeping your, col- your bees as little stress and, and as strong as they possibly can be. Yep. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So with today's loss rates, disease pressures, and resistant issues, what do you think beekeepers most underestimate about ongoing risks inside the hive? Ongoing resistance? Onzo- ongoing risk. Risk. Inside uh, the hive. Well, I mean, okay, the obvious one is Varroa. I mean, people still today don't manage Varroa maybe as well as they could. Uh, if you don't manage Varroa, you lose your colleagues. That's just the way it works now. Uh, and that's either through treatment or through breeding or whatever it is. There's lots of different ways of doing that. Um, yeah, I, I suppose I, I suppose it goes back to the same thing. It's keeping colonies strong. I mean, we, 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 a lot of people know we, we ran a survey uh, this, this spring with our beekeepers to see um, what their colony losses were. The, you know, the data come out with uh, Project APSM, about 600 hives or 600 beekeepers, and they were seeing between high 50s, 60% losses, huge losses, devastating losses. Yeah. Um, we did it with our, we did 300 beekeepers uh, we surveyed. They were people who'd used Hive Alive. They were our customers that bought through the website. And they were seeing like 23% losses. Like that, that's a huge difference, a huge, yes, huge difference. Yeah. I mean, if, if you had 10 colonies and you spent whatever it was to feed your 10 colonies in Hive Alive, you saved one colony. That's enough of Hive Alive for 10 years. It is. You know, yeah. it, it's, it, yeah. it's a no brainer in that sense, you know? So yeah. I think that's, that's I, was, I was thrilled to have it. I was thrilled to see that, just, you know, the real world application. This is what people are actually seeing. Yeah. And I think that it just goes back in without beating myself too much. It's just keeping colonies strong and healthy. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. in all the interviews that I've done with other beekeepers pretty much all over the United States, that is what they've said too, is that nutrition, if you fall on that, then everything else crumbles after yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really, you really have to keep your colonies strong. And, yeah. and it's, yeah, the environment just today is not what it used to be. Uh, it really is not. It really isn't. It's a difficult time. And it sounds like it's happening that way across the entire world because there's a couple of people I follow from overseas and they're saying the same things that we're saying here in America. So that kind of blew my yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, we have got, like in Europe, there's colony losses. It's not the same extent as USA, but we don't, we don't move them as much. I think that the, the huge mass movement of bees over to, to, our, to, to, to the US for the almonds yeah. It's got to cause problems. I know it needs to be done. I get it completely. Like, but it's got to cause, you know, huge, oh, yeah. you know, if, if a virus is making its way somewhere in some colonies or it was born, if it was moving slowly through colonies, it might dissipate its strength, which they tend to do, like the COVID did or whatever, just kind of weakens itself out. But when, when it doesn't get a chance to do that and just goes straight in, exposed to like, what is it, half the bees in the U.S. get moved to the almonds? Uh, I think more than that. Yeah, huge amount. Times. It's like it's a huge amount of, of opportunity yeah. for this virus to go crazy really quick. You know, yeah. that's that's stressful. That's hard to manage. It is yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, what does the testing look like for Hive Alive? Like, what is when you're sending it for testing? What are you doing? Um, well, you can tell me the development of it, or yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we would have done a lot of in vitro work, seeing about like the antibacterial, the antifungals, uh, the antiviral stuff, and that's antiviral because it's very hard to test for, to be honest. Uh, first of all, doing a lot of background research on on what seaweed extracts to use. And then we have a special process for extracting those seaweeds. That's that, that, that's uh, it's actually a patent process where it's it's a cold process, so the the extracts don't get damaged. Um, that's why we say don't put put the add hive light to syrup hot. Um, keep it. I think it's under 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then what we did we did we just started doing cage trials uh, to validate that it was working, that it was having efficacy. And then I suppose the big breakthrough then would have been doing the long term trials. So we knew short term. That, that, that it was having a positive effect, particularly on the seam and stuff like that. But we we hadn't. It's hard to, hard to quantify because you know people would say, oh, this worked, this didn't work, this didn't work. But you only really do when you do a, like a long term study. So this actually did work. It's almost just a quick fix and sort of a quick change, and then you know maybe it went back and got worse afterwards. So like what's what's happened in the long term trials that really show the difference. So the trial was over a year and a half with using it in spring, or sorry, using it in the autumn, in the fall, and in the spring. Uh, and, and what that showed was, it actually blew us away. And it's actually, the, the results are so good that actually we can't tend not to talk about them because people think we made them up. <laughs> like, because there were nooks. And, and, and basically, the, 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 the Hive Alive group were nearly twice as strong as the control group by the end of the year and a half. Um, wow. And you didn't see that straight away. 
And in fact, sometimes what you'll see actually with, with high of alive is that the SEMA levels will spike up a little bit and then drop down again. I think that's because what they're doing is the SEMA itself, you when you look at the spores, it's not you see like the active part is in the gut. That's it's not spores, it's replication method. I think what happens, and I've heard this from other contacts as well, is that when uh, uh, SEMA gets stressed, it needs to replicate to get the hell out uh, to survive as a species. So when the high of life is in there, I think it makes more nocebus spores in the short term, and then obviously it starts dropping down because it's, it's given up now. It can't do anymore. It's under stress. So it's not able to replicate. So, yeah, um, going back to the science behind us, that, that's what's happened. We did other surveys as well. Other, other um, Sorry, not surveys, but, but studies. Again, controls, control studies, using control, using high alive. But that main big one was the peer-reviewed published one, which which nobody, no, no other else in the industry, uh, in the supplement industry, has that sort of science show really long-term, really positive effects. Um, there's other products that have a short-term effect, but in my opinion, products that have short-term, if they have a dramatic short-term effect, a lot of times there's a side effect further down the road. Um, you know, it's, it's a simple thing like, you know, in human context, you take strong antibiotics and then your gut's all messed up afterwards and, and, and you're not right afterwards for weeks and weeks exactly. afterwards, you know. It does sort the problem out temporarily, but generally there's an underlying symptom that needs to be addressed and that's where Hive Life comes in. It takes care of the underlying symptom. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that firsthand. So just personally, this year, we expanded our operation pretty quickly with small splits. And we've been using Hive Alive, like I said, for the last few years, used it throughout this entire spring and summer. And when we had our inspector come out to do the APHIS survey, we had pretty much nothing when it came to virus loads. And then wow. compared to the rest of the United States, you could see like where everybody's wow. numbers were. Wow, brilliant. Yeah, there was nothing. I'm sure that's your good beekeeping as well. Uh, I think the Hive Life helped too, though. Actually. <laughs> nutrition, I mean, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, Fred Dunn called by today. This, I don't know if I can be saying this. I don't think I might be saying this. So I don't know about this. I don't have I don't have data on this, so I can't back it up. And this is what Fred Dunn told me today: is that he got a swarm last year. He didn't know that that for feeding high life, the best way to feed is just to add to all the syrup that you feed, as opposed to feeding a certain amount. Yeah. And um, so we, he, we we had a webinar with him there last year, and so when he he said he's, he knew that he said over that he got a swarm, and what he did is constantly fed it high alive. And he, he said, now this is a one-off example, like I I. I, I I'm not saying this is the case, but I have heard other people say it to me. He's overall loads in those colonies. He thinks that it's the the, the, the ingredients are, are sitting in, in the wax that they're building out the wax, and that the it's it's somehow making it unattractive for the varroa to establish itself in the colonies. So I have to do some work on that, get some data behind that. But I thought that was really interesting to find yeah. that today. Worth coming to show just for that alone. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to see that because I yeah. mean, even when we usually do our fall treatments, went through testing everything and. I barely even had to treat. Oh, right. I only did because I was like, oh, winter's coming, I maybe should. Yeah, but, yeah, that's that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go around and tell people that it's in yeah. my control because yeah, it's not, yeah. you know, yeah. but but I, it seems to definitely help. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Okay, so, there was one I know. Okay, so among experienced and commercial beekeepers, do you see Hive Live treated more as like an optional product or as a standard part of keeping colonies healthy? You know, it's really clear with the, particularly with the commercial beekeepers, you know the ones are going to buy Hive Alive. You see straight away, you just know, once you start learning about their beekeeping and how they beekeep, you know if they'll be buying or not. If yeah. they're proactive, if they're trying to keep their colonies healthy and not reactive, they buy Hive Alive. Simple yeah. as that. It's it's um, it's a mindset thing. And, and another part of this, you know, people kind of look for this sort of knee-jerk reactions. Oh, I put it in, put it in for a month, I didn't see it. Then. We're not, it's not a boost. You know, I don't like using that word because it's, 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 it's not a boost. It's keeping your colony strong and healthy. So you're not going to see a sudden jolt of of of, of, of bees bursting out of the seams of the bee, uh, uh, thing that we can in the frames. But it's more about keeping them. And the guys who keep the notes, keep the records. You know, this yes. is the one I treated. This is the one. I, this con this is the apiary I treated. This is the one I didn't treat. That one's doing better. Yeah. That's how they see it. That's how they know. And that, that difference really. Oh yeah. Um, that's what I see. Yeah. yeah. I agree fully. Yeah. Yeah. So in difficult seasons, poor forage, with a high disease load, tough overwintering, where does Hive Life make the biggest difference in colony survival and stability? Yeah, I, I, we talked about it, I guess, really. You know, it's really yeah. just keeping them healthy and, and avoiding stressors on them. So that, so or not avoiding stressors, but better able to handle stressors when they come along. Yeah. 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 Almost act as like their vitamin instead of... Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Um, yeah. 
So if a new beekeeper came to you focus only on treatments and emergency fixes, what would you tell them about preventing problems rather than constantly reacting to them? Yeah, I, I guess we're saying the same thing, but I, I, the, the first the first important, most important thing, irrespective of Hive Alive, is, is Varroa. you got to manage Varroa. If you're not managing Varroa, you're just not even in the game. And then it's after that's optimizing. Like, I, th I think in some ways, if there was no Varroa, Hive Alive would be much, much more popular in the sense that it'd be easier to see the difference that Hive Alive makes. Yeah. Because Varroa is such a variable, and like you know, one colony have a lot of Varroa, another colony have a lower amount of Varroa. So, did the colonies do better? I don't know because the Varroa was the dominating factor. Yeah. Um, whereas the only way you see is when you're doing big studies that you can actually show proper trends. So, I, th I think the first thing has got to be you know manage Varroa, keep Varroa under control, uh, and then like, like that, just, just everything you can to keep your colonies healthy. Don't stress them out. And, you know, one thing, especially new beekeepers do, is they, they, they inspect their bees too often. I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. you know, yeah. that that's they, yeah. they know it sets them back like, you know, yeah. one inspect sets them back four or five days, stresses them out. Uh, yeah. You know, do the minimum you have to work out towards the minimum versus the it's not better to go visit them more often. It's, it's worse and oh, change yeah. that mindset. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing beats oh, not yeah. seeing a hive yeah. for three weeks and you pop it open. It's you're like, oh, Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, I've learned that it's exactly the same. You just the more you ignore them, the better they are. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so my last question. If there's one mindset shift that you wish more beekeepers would make about colony health, what would it be? Yeah, it, it's, it's that proactive thing. It, it, yeah. it, it, it's, I, I think, and I suppose the change of mindset on Hive Alive maybe as well is that, that people look at it as a luxury product or a boosting product or a supplement product, but look at it as a way of your health management of your colonies, as a way of knowing that if we use this, um, there's less a chance of something going wrong, and there's a much greater chance of bees being more productive, making you more honey. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right, do we have any questions? Huh? It's supposed to be on Hive Live, not ours. Oh, it's on Hive Live? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Hi, do you have a question? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess, did you have a question, Casey, that you wanted to ask? Nothing would move it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. question. Uh, do the bees talk to you, or do you talk to the bees? Do the bees talk to me? Yeah, do the bees talk to you, or do you talk to them? I don't talk to them. Uh, but, I mean, they talk to me, but not in, no, you know, not in words, in the sense of they're... they're you know, you nearly know before you open a colony what state it's in. Uh, and especially, and actually, as soon as you lift the lid, you kind of know what state it is. And before you open the, the, the cover, you, the sounds they make, definitely. Uh, there was a AI talk on two, not at the top, it was an informal talk there with a bunch of heads um, two days ago. It was really interesting. There's a couple people that are doing um, research with AI, looking at the sound the colony makes, and they reckon that that, that varroa levels can be monitored just by the sound. And seemingly yeah. what was really cool is that the colony isn't healthy. It makes like a minor, like, you know, there's major and minors in chords or whatever in music, yeah. that they make a minor, which is considered sad in, in, in music. Yeah. They make a minor sound when they're not well and a major sound when they're well. So that was pretty cool. You know, I think yeah. as beekeepers are really tuned in because I've said this many times, when you crack open a hive, you can tell if they're happy or yeah. something's not yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that stress high well, frequency. Yeah, you can definitely, after, after a couple of years, you definitely feel it. Yeah, 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 I agree completely. Yeah. All right, well, I'm excited because we actually have a whole pallet of your fun that coming oh, to us in California brilliant. for our hives. Okay. And honestly, just I think like five days. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so we'll be using it soon. Yeah, you're uh, excited until you start moving the boxes. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I miss being stung. <laughs> it's been too long. It's been like two months. <laughs> yeah, you'd be laying, you were keeping them quiet. You were staying away from them for a while. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. have them in California right now waiting for almonds. So. Okay. Cool. Yep. Do you move them? Yep. yep from, we from, sent them out there from Michigan. From Michigan. Okay, cool. Yep. cool, cool long cool. trek. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, um, that is a long trek. Yeah, yeah. So the fawn is there waiting for them for... Yep. We'll sort them yep, out. We'll put Good. them on there. It'll stimulate them, keep them healthy for the year, and get them ready for home. Yeah, and of course you can move with the fawn and on, which is nice. If you're transporting bees, you can leave the fawn and on. You don't have to worry about syrup spilling or anything exactly. like that. A lot that of commercial guys do that. Yep. Yeah. And if we have extra, then we don't have to be dumping it out. We can just throw it back on the truck and send it back to us. Perfect. Yep. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for chatting with me. It was so great to meet you. A pleasure. A pleasure. A pleasure. Thank you. All right.
How many colonies are you working? 